Welcome to Local Gov Strategy TV. Today I've got with me Niall Bolger, who is the Chief Executive of the London Borough of Sutton. We live in an a age of austerity, tough economic times, perhaps the toughest for many generations. Uh, Sutton has the challenge of saving, I think, around £30 million. Um, how are you going to do that without substantial uh, reductions or cuts to services? The, the approach we've taken is something called Smarter Services Sutton which meant that every single service that we provide has been reviewed. And we started that process in 2008, and that was prior to the issues that we're dealing with at the moment in relation to the comprehensive spending review. But we predicted that there would be a need for transformation of those services over time. And we could see the austerity measures coming forward via various, various efficiency announcements from the previous government. So we reviewed every single one of our services. But we've reviewed our services not to solely look at reducing their cost base by 25%. We've also looked at ways in which we can transform those services so that we can engage with residents so that they can take much more responsibility for their delivery. So a really good example of that would be the work we've done in special educational needs transport. Quite a considerable amount of money is spent on that as a general fund expenditure and that usually meant that we would go door to door picking up children with special educational needs and then the, re the, the carers or the parents would drop their children off and would take them to the relevant schools. By adapting that system, by moving away from collecting people, from young people from their homes and bringing those children to points where we go and collect them, that's a lots of benefits. That's a benefits in the sense that we've saved a lot of money, but equally we've also built the confidence of young people who've got special educational needs to negotiate the environment and to enable the parents to be able to allow them to be able to be freer within their own interpretation of the place where they live. So there's lots of benefits in terms of the confidence of those young people as well as the fact that we've saved money. And so we've transformed that service with some real concerns and some rigorous discussions and debates which has made sure that that can continue as a service whilst also meeting our savings target and also having those social benefits for those young people in terms of their experience of becoming independent. It's encouraging to hear you answer that question with a service example and one that impacts uh, on service users in a very beneficial way. Um, but because uh, often when you ask this question, you get an answer around ICT and, and you know business processes. Yeah. Um, but ICT does uh, indeed have an important part yeah. to play. So how are you changing, uh, how are you using and changing ICT and, and processes to, to meet the challenges? And that, that's a really important point. Obviously we need to reduce our cost base in, in relation to the on costs in relation to this frontline service delivery. Um, one of the things which we've done is we are in the process in terms of information communication technology are partnering with the Royal, uh, Royal Borough of Kingston upon Thames and we have a shared service with them. Um, we're just going through the process at the moment of developing our detailed business case in relation to options for the procurement of new service provision uh, jointly across both borough boundaries. And the expectation is, is that there will be considerable reductions in costs as a result of that. We've also invested quite heavily in relation to our back office systems to make sure they're much more efficient. And a good example of that would be in a recently launched Triborough partnership which covers uh, ourselves, Kingston and Merton councils for one single integrated HR system. Now that's delivered quite considerable costs for all of the partners in that, uh, in, in, in that project. But also it's enabled us to look at different ways in which we have managers taking accountability and responsibility and empowering staff to be able to take responsibility for their own management of their own HR issues and HR processes. 
Now, that's recently been launched, but we've already got the financial benefits out of the system by replacing the legacy systems as a consequence of that collaborative partnership arrangement. And we expect more to come forward from that as we move forward to look at ways in which our shared service uh, approach can uh, deliver value in the context of our back office. So we're on a journey at the moment uh, which enables us, will enable us in eventually to see very, very real savings in relation to the back office services across uh, borough boundaries, preferably across borough boundaries. Um, Sutton's had to look at in that way because we're a relatively small London borough, we're the fourth smallest London borough. We're surrounded by relatively small London boroughs and as a consequence the, the market power, if you will, of making sure that we're getting benefit from our investment in capital in terms of the revenue savings is best served by us partnering and collaborating across partnerships across other boroughs. Um, there's quite a range of investment activity going on and anal an analysis in relation to whether further savings could be derived from better use of technology. And certainly my expectation there hypothesis and which I have is that we can get much much greater value out of our investment by looking at ways in which we standardize and ensure that there's uh, organizational capacity to be able to use the systems but also in order that we can look at ways in which we can reduce our spend in relation to that market whilst also stimulating better business processes internally.